Hi, welcome to The Virgo Show. I'm Sherry Hansen. I'm with Jim Jensen today. Thank you, Jim, for joining me. We're out on beautiful Rose Lake on a beautiful summer morning. It just doesn't get any better than this. It doesn't. It's, no. a, it's a slice of heaven. And, and you get to wake up to this every morning. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes there's, there's blue and green outside and for a lot of months it's it's white. <laughs> yeah, a lot of months it's white. That That is correct. But Jim, it took you a while to get to the point where you're back here in um, on Rose Lake outside of Vergas. And that's what we're with uh, um, today. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, hopefully you had a chance to get to Vergas and, and enjoying some of the great lakes and a lot of the summer things going on. We've talked about a lot of the different activities. We've got loony days coming up. And um, so there is still a lot going on in Vergas, but we are kind of getting into where, you know, finishing out July. And so you start thinking August and I don't know, I think spring training or fall training for football, the, you know, preseason. And that's why I've got Jim with me today. So you got a story to tell, Jim. I, um, you haven't lived in Vergas your whole life. Um, where did you start out? And tell me a little bit about your beginnings. Okay, well, I, I, I grew up in Davenport, Iowa which okay. uh, um, is kind of eastern, southeastern Iowa. And a lot of Iowans love to vacation in Minnesota they just because it's up north. And, <laughs> and you get fish. <laughs> and you get fish and not, not just bullheads. Right. Which is a big <laughs> joke. But, uh, you know, it's interesting. My father brought me up uh, to Minnesota when I was young. I've got a picture of myself in diapers on Big Pine Lake, I think, in 54. Okay. Uh, but his dad, uh, who grew up in Constable Bluffs, Iowa, used to bring my dad and his family up here. Okay. So over the years, it was a tradition. You know, sure. every July we'd pack up and drive up here, and before freeways, it was kind of interesting. Oh, definitely. I can't even imagine. <laughs> and then would you stay for like a week or two weeks, or? We'd stay two to three weeks. Okay. Uh, and we were at Big Pine at an old place called Jungle Shores, which. Blaine and Wilma, I forget their last name, but they had it for a long, long time. It was a wonderful little place. And Great memories. Then, uh, late 60s, my dad and my uncles discovered Rose Lake by f fishing here. And uh, at the time, uh, Fran Giuliani, who owned a little resort down at the east of this beach, had some land for sale. And so my... I grew up knowing the Giuliani's too, you know, and you talk, they talked about the Giuliani Resort and... Um, oh yeah. Yeah. And so you guys got in on this, great. We came in kind of at the end of his deal, but f coming from Big Pine, and Big Pine's got its, you know, it's, it's nice in a lot of mm -hmm. ways, but the water quality between Rose Lake and Big Pine is just no comparison. And when we were kids over here, we looked in the water and we saw fish five, six feet down in the water. and. <laughs> It's just like, whoa, you know, hey, this is cool, so. And you still see that on you Rose. You still do. Rose is beautiful. Still, I was out snorkeling yesterday, matter of fact. Really? Yeah. Oh, but, so the, the three brothers, my dad and my two uncles built, helped each other build places here in the late 60s. Okay. And uh, have maintained them over the years, and some have changed hands. Um, you, you mentioned training camp, and you know, this time of year for people in college or pro football, it's not a real good time of year because you're dreading going back to, to camp into two I days. Suppose. And I remember I'd be in training camp sometimes just dying and all I could think about was sitting on the dock at Rose Lake <laughs> as my little mental escape. That was your mental escape. Yeah. That, that, um, that's a nice mental escape to have. Oh, I mean, it's just the view out here. It, it hasn't changed in 40 years. Mm -hmm. uh, the view out here has not. There's, no. a, there's a few more homes. and. That's what I like about Vergas. It uh, it has changed, but there's still parts of it that you could flash back to 1977, and yeah, right. there's the post office, and there's the yeah, hardware yeah, store, and there's the bank. Yeah, <laughs> and some of us are still here. <laughs> well, but um, you talk about training camp. Um, you've had a very illustrious football career, Jim. And um, let's go from, from, you know, normally you start at the beginnings. I want to start, you know, where did you end your career at? And, and tell me about a few of the highlights first. Okay. Well, I was at three different teams uh, over my career. The last uh, being the Green Bay Packers, which oh, I'm sorry. I know how Vikings fans <laughs> love the Packers. That's okay. <laughs> we'll finish this interview. No. <laughs> yeah, it's in the same division, you know. Yes, so. it is. But uh, so I, I finished there. Bart Starr was the head coach at the time, and uh, 
he, he made that experience the best that it could be, I think. Uh, he is a wonderful man, mm -hmm. um, honest. Uh, if he said something or promised you something, it would happen. And so I, I really enjoyed meeting a man of his, of his caliber. Uh, you don't get a chance to meet too many people like right. that during your life. That's but true. I, I knew I wasn't going to live in Green Bay. Uh, mm -hmm. My family and I, we'd rent a, an apartment uh, for the season and move there from Colorado and, and stay there. And so that ended in January of 83, after okay. the last uh, postseason playoff game. And Your um, longest period of time with the team was with the Broncos? Yes, I was with the Broncos for four seasons. And then uh, the Dallas Cowboys drafted me from out of college, University of Iowa. And I was with the Cowboys for one season. So I had seven years in the NFL. Um, kind of saw the long and the short of it between Dallas and Denver and Green Bay. You go from the south to the north and you did. the sophisticated to the, the Packers who couldn't break out of the Vince Lombardi frame of mind. It was right. really, really interesting. <laughs> but uh, so it was, it, it was an you know, interesting interlude. You know, it, it was a career, but it's getting to the point where, I, you know, I played in Super Bowl 12 when I was with Denver in 77. I was going to ask you about Super Bowl, yeah. And that was Super Bowl 12. So I think somebody said that this year's Super Bowl was going to be 50 or 51. It is. Okay, that dates us, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm like, okay. <laughs> so it's, it's getting to be a long time ago. And my football career ended a long time ago. And, you know, after that, I, I got into the advertising public relations business and spent, uh, you know, from 83 until 2011. Okay. in that and, and basically in Denver, Colorado. In Denver. Yeah. You know, you um, we, we've only got a couple minutes here left in, on, on this and there's just so much I want to ask you about but you talked about in your in your paper interview of enjoying your high school time the best and I always say that Little League Baseball is always you know the purest. Is that is that what you you kind of got from playing in high school? Some of your favorite friends it, and memories? You know, it was. You were with your teammates who had been your friends, mm -hmm. some of them since kindergarten. So you had this history with the people that you were with. Sure. And uh, I mean, your parents were there, your friends were there, your girlfriend was there, your teachers. When you went to a game, you had all these, it's like you had your community in the stands watching you. Yeah. Um, so I think the reasons we played back then, you know, it wasn't for money, it wasn't for anything other than uh, friendship and peer pressure and for your school right. and uh, when you get into the big league it's a different thing isn't it yeah it it changes uh good or bad i mean there were some highlights you know in, in college you know we one year we were i played at university of iowa and in the 1973 season we hadn't we didn't win a game all season and for a big 10 team that's that's pretty miserable and hmm. the next year ucla came out to play us and uh we beat them, and the town, the whole state erupted. It just was such a big, big deal. Big deal. And uh, actually, somebody, a group of people, pulled up the goalposts, drug them up the stadium, and threw them off the east stands of Kinnick Field in Iowa City, which is a couple hundred feet tall. And it's amazing. Nobody got killed. That is anyway. amazing. Yes, and so, I mean, you know, Jim, um, I think you got some stories from college football, and I think that um, there, there's just some other things I kind of want to hear about the pro football, especially since we're heading into the next season. I think what we're going to do is we're going to close up today's show. We plan to come on back okay. next week and so we can hear some sure. more about it. All right, and um, I want to thank you for joining us today on the Virgus Show, and thank you, Jim, and, okay. and stay tuned until next week, and you're going to hear more about your college years and, and how that all happened. You have a good day in Virgus.